is the Glass Cannon Network. Welcome back to Arrakis, space travelers. You have just tuned in to the Glass Cannon Network and our presentation of Inherit the Sand, a Dune saga. It's a saga, everybody. We are playing Dune Oh, Dune Adventures oh. in the Imperium from Modifius, uh, an excellent role-playing game that recreates the Duneiverse. Uh, in uh, painstaking detail, I am your game master. My name is Jared Logan, and with me I have four incredible uh, players, uh, castmates. Um, let's say hello to Becca Scott, Skid Mauer, Nora Ibrahim, and Ross Bryant. What's up, guys? Hey. What's up, Jared? Doing good. You know, uh, I feel really good. You guys really moved through sort of the the prep for this uh, sort of space worm heist that we're dealing with very quickly uh, and with with skill. Uh, but now we're coming to the the really tricky parts where you've actually got to do the thing that you've come to do. And uh, I I mean I'm not gonna lie, I'm worried for you. Oh, and uh, just some I'm dice make- rolls. What's so scary? <laughs> Just a couple easy dice rolls. Do you have, um, each of you, would you say that you have good dice luck or bad dice luck? I am a great game master because I have terrible <laughs> dice luck, uh, which means the, great good, trait the good guys get master. to win sometimes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what about I have you? distinct impressions on two people at the table that are not me and their <laughs> dice luck. <laughs> I feel like this is a trap because as soon as I say, I've got great dice luck. I am going to roll terribly this game. So I think, is this what your tactic is, Jared? Game, oh, write, down, write down these tactics. Learn from Nora. <laughs> I forgot the there's magic for the mojo jinx. involved. Yeah, there's magical <laughs> mojo. Uh, if you say that you have a great dice luck, it's you're going to jinx yourself. So knock on wood, um, kiss your lucky charms, and uh, and hope <laughs> that, you, that you roll well. This is a roll under system. This is the weird system where if you roll a natch 20... You're screwed, man. Yeah. You want some of those sweet, sweet ones. My my dice luck is pretty normal, but I do have a trick. And I can't use it all the time or it won't work. But sometimes... Lying about the results on the dice. Lying about the results on the dice. You got it. it. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. Please, please don't do that. Please don't. No, I can call my shot. Sometimes I will name a specific that like a surprisingly wow. often amount of times I'll name the number I would like to roll and that number comes up. You can't do it every time. It doesn't work every time, but that right. does happen with me sometimes too. Yeah, it's wild. Hmm. Some low I also level like to go with the uh, mm-hmm. no whammy, no whammy, no whammy method. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a, a professional concentration. Method. Yes. Classic flawless. It, um, takes, it takes time to hone that skill. Mm-hmm. This is manifestation. That- this, yes. this, this is something that came up the other day that I saw. Have any of you actually seen an episode of the game show Press Your Luck? Oh, that, that's what it no. I said classic what concentration, but you're right. It's a, it's the show is called Press Your Luck. And the whammies were these. Yes, I have. The whammies were these okay. little creatures that would sometimes <laughs> come up in like the random kind of role of the contestant. And they would whammy you and take your money and prizes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was great. And actually, the show that you also featured on, Ross, had a sketch that was based on that game show yeah. loosely also. Yeah, Chunky from I Think You Should Leave is very yes. much based on the whammies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's funny is that show, it was a pretty popular show, but it ended up going off the air because somebody, one of the contestants figured out the pattern and went on the show and proceeded to destroy the entire board and just ruined the whole premise and they canceled it. Wait, this is Prisoner's Dilemma? Uh, no. No, no, no. we're talking oh. about we're talking about uh Press Your Luck. Yeah, Press Your Luck, yeah, the game show. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's like how people figured out how to cheat at who wants to be a millionaire. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah. Like uh, how how bizarre that people Are, like game it that hard. Y'all know that's, that's how our friend Brendan Mulligan. Lee Mulligan oh. Y'all know that's how our friend Brennan Lee Mulligan moved to L.A., right? He, he won? He won like 50 grand on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Oh, he moved no to way. LA. I didn't that's know cool. that. On the internet. Crazy. Why? Wow. Is there anything about that guy I'm not jealous of? Right? <laughs> <laughs> 
I actually <laughs> tested into a contestant spot uh, for Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, but the producers turned me down because they thought I was too boring. Aww. Aww. That's so. Well, we don't think you're boring. You skin. now. I know. Make it's like you now. Could you be more desperate or like cry more in your audition or something? Yeah, I know. I didn't have you're a good answer. A what if you won a million dollars? What would you do? And I didn't have a good answer. You're like, uh, I'd spend it. Buy an ornithopter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah, I'd buy an ornithopter. Yeah, today, if I were to do it again, and give that's the cat what I would a name. Say. I would, yep. And why aren't ornithopters mm-hmm. commercially available in 2022 in America? Uh, that question, uh, I, I leave to you, the audience, to to respond and answer for us. Yeah. We need uh, some weird now, leave your to conspiracy build us- the- theories in the comments. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Why are they trying to keep us from airplanes with uh, dragonfly physics? <laughs> right? It all, it's all connected. They, they, they're they hiding it for there. a reason, man. Um <laughs> All right. Uh, Well, speaking of ornithopters, you guys are in a different kind of flying craft. Your characters are in a spacecraft that has been repaired for you by Teresa, the spice smuggler. Um, You stole some components from the Arrakis spaceport to get an old hulk of a spacecraft up and running so that you could travel to Siege Alburn, a secret siege deep in the deserts of Arrakis in order to steal or possibly learn how to ride a sandworm? I don't think that you've decided which you want to do yet. Why are you doing this? Why are you stealing a sandworm? Why? Well, it's because when the Atreides rose to power, they completely stripped House Harkonnen and all of the Harkonnen vassals of their fiefdoms. And so you have been stripped of house, stripped of power, stripped of your position until you were approached by Fenton Quill, a Harkonnen agent who offered you a new planet exactly, it's almost like exactly like Arrakis, it's just missing one thing, it's missing a sandworm. And so you you arrived in Arakeen, you found out where the materials you needed were, you found out how to get a spacecraft that could hold the worm, you found out how to get the parts you needed to get it running again, you found out who would have a worm or or knowledge about how to get one, a rogue siege out of the desert named Siege Alburn, and now you uh, you are going there uh, as we speak. And so um, I, I must describe the journey because you've decided to just fly out there in a spacecraft. Well, spacecraft in Dune, um, you know, we, we spoke about the Hayliners, which are giant miles long starships that um, that fold space. Uh, and uh, the guild navigators are the only ones that can fly them. But we haven't talked about uh, the smaller spacecraft quite as much, and it's interesting that you're trying to use this just to go to a siege out in the desert, because these are orbital transports, which means that you're literally gonna have to shoot yourself into orbit, and then shoot yourself back down through the atmosphere and try to kind of hit a pinpoint location uh, and land near this siege. And um, Teresa has repaired the spacecraft for you, but I didn't tell you how her role went. Mm-hmm. And so, I don't like those air quotes you just did. Well, she well she did repair. She repaired okay. it. She 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 took the components you stole from the spaceport. She put them into the ship. It lifted off at the end of last week's uh, session, um, and so now uh, you uh, you you have ascended. <laughs> through the atmosphere, the ship's kind of shaking. Uh, normally, a, a orbital transport would have a little bit of a smoother ride, but this one is old and very corroded, and you're all in this thing. And you you should know that even though the, the, the part that you're in, the, the sort of cockpit or bridge of the thing is quite small, the cargo hold of the thing is tremendously massive. It's the size of several buildings. So um, this thing is lifting off, off out of the Iraqi night uh, out into the desert, um, I told you that it would be conspicuous uh, to take off in this thing, and I gotta tell you, I'm adding threat for it. I know I did that last time because of what went down at the archive when you found out where to find Siege Alburn, but I'm doing it again. I'm bringing myself up to four threat because you have basically let people in Arakeen know that you're here. Mm. Uh, whether they will follow you out into the desert with your starship uh, is left uh, is left up for a question right now, but um, your ship heads up through the atmosphere, and now you are trying the delicate maneuver where you bring it back down to that pinpoint, that exact location that you found in the maps of Liet Kynes that lead you to Siege Alburn. And so, I would like to know who's piloting this thing. Not I. I mean, I think we had uh, 
We we were counting on the on the confidence of Aurelius to grow. Yeah, I think I have to do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I have to do it. Always a great sign <laughs> for a player. You yeah. have to believe much, in your dice. I much do. like throwing scarecrows around repair, I think I have to do it. Always <laughs> makes your heart brim with anticipation and That's confidence. Right. That's right. Okay, um, Aurelius. Um, as you um, descend through the uh, through the stratosphere toward uh, the baked. Uh, cause, cause it, it takes you a couple hours to kind of pull off this maneuver. Um, and, uh, the sun is coming up again as you, as you slowly descend through the atmosphere, the cloudless atmosphere, uh, down to where you think Siege Alburn is. And then, um, uh, suddenly, um, lights start going on on the council console and those lights are red. And you realize that while, uh, our friend Teresa got a partial success, she didn't quite get enough successes oh, no. to give you a perfect ship. And so oh, the, suspe- the suspensor fields that you use to land the ship are completely not working. They are, <laughs> they are not uh, operable. Uh, and so uh, I'm going to uh, give this scene a trait uh, called perilous. Uh, and uh, I'm going to say that you have to roll at a higher difficulty because of that trait. Um, in order to land this thing because instead of just kind of coming down and then depending on the suspensor fields to give you a nice cushion you've got to somehow kind of bring this thing in slowly over the sand uh, so that it doesn't crash into the earth uh, f- forgive me into Arrakis um, so uh, what are you going to use what skill are you going to use well I guess I have to use move how is and- your move skill what 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 how much move skill do you have it's five, and I okay. have uh, the focus grace. So, which is not this is not really what I was picturing when I took that. So, I don't think I should use the focus. Actually, but, if yeah. I may, I don't mean to argue with you. Uh, far be it from me to let a player take away advantages, but I would say a graceful landing is something that's possible with an aircraft. Okay, so I'm going to allow you to apply that. Thank you. It's very generous. Very un. La Valley like of you. I, I applaud you. <laughs> and uh, for the new my... teacher's here. Uh, he won't hurt you anymore. <laughs> we the sub is here. We get to watch a movie today. Sweet. Uh, and so for the drive, my highest score is justice. And the reason the case I would make for using it is that my drive statement is I will bring down a house of trades by any means necessary. And in this case, I'm actually bringing down another house in the process. Literally. So, just... Um, I'll allow it. You can use determination for this, uh, which I think is is maybe something you want to do. Um, because I'm going to say that it's going to it's gonna take three successes. Okay. Um, I have two momentum in the momentum pool for you right now, and I have four, four threat. Um, and you, you can use determination on this if you'd like. Okay. I will use determination... To get an automatic one on on one of the dice, right? So you already have two successes, yeah. Right. Okay, so, and then I will spend a point of momentum to roll an extra die. So I will roll two dice and try to get under my total, which is 13. Okay. <laughs> Two seventeens, two natty seventeens. Don't Ooh. roll like that. <laughs> <laughs> the spacecraft smashes into the desert sands. Are All are of this? you are knocked about horribly, uh. bruised and and battered as the ship grinds along the bedrock beneath the sand, uh, and and soon it comes to a very rough stop, rolling over in the sand. Um, it, it, you are buried in sand. Um, you have definitely announced your presence to anybody who's out here, and your ship may not be operable without some sort of repairs. Okay. Um, no. You are currently in seats hanging uh, sideways inside of the ship, uh, like strapped in. Uh, that's the only thing that's keeping you in your seat. Um, what would you like to do next? 
Uh, I, think I imagine look... I unstrap <laughs> and then just fall to whatever surface. Yes. <laughs> Is everyone all right? <clears throat> I think if you look at Pharos just for a second, like the eyes are wrong. Like, like he's drifted out of, out of phase and like has to kind of like uh, get back into into the the visage. He's again taken on the guise of the um, of the uh, naive of the of the of the long ago siege um, uh, Ktef Dulub. And he also like stumbles out of his restraints. Great. So I use my pranabindu conditioning to keep all of my muscles limber. Great. So yes. So you have to say that word. <laughs> yes, you are limber. <laughs> limber. Uh, and you you um you dexterously uh, spider like uh, crawl out of your uh, out of your restraints and onto the side of the the ship's wall. Um, so everybody has extricated themselves from the ship if they'd like. Um, mm. And you did procure uh, high quality still suits for everybody. Um, and I told you that if you try to create an asset, you did so well on that role, Corin, that if you try to create an asset later for some sort of survival gear you need, I'll probably make it a little easier than normal because of how well mm. you did. Good um, to know. So um, now here's the, here's, the, here's the good news. You do think that you're, pro- you're near Siege Alburn. Um, and in fact, uh, are you exiting the craft? Is anybody exiting the craft, or there's something? Is there something you'd like to do before you exit the craft? Uh, can we just look? Is there? Can we just look out? I'm imagining there's windows, just to see what. Yeah, th- there are actually these the immediate- weird. There's these weird cameras that kind of like are, are almost more like spy glasses with like long tubing that come down into the ship, and you can mm-hmm. use that. Uh, and you look into you know this these weird periscope like appendages and you see um far off on a rocky hill nearby lots of little white um figures moving out and toward your position Hmm. it was a it was a spacecraft craft (laughs) they're interested i think we might need a plan yeah like i apologize uh, to all of you that was a bit rougher than I had intended, but any landing you can walk away from, there's, so they say. But I think, We're not like, here simply to exist. We're here to create a new world for ourselves and our followers, and to do that, we will need this ship to carry a worm. Of course, my lady, I do apologize. I will, I will do my best to repair the ship if I can. I should hope so. This is not looking good. Okay, so you're going to repair the ship, actually. Are you going to do that right now, or are you going to wait till later? Are you going to wait? Because it looks like a, a, a party is coming out to meet you yeah, all. Yeah, I think yeah. given the fact that we have people. Also, I mean, if we crash like, in the deep desert, that would seem to be a, 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 an, ex, a, an amount of noise that might also just draw a worm on its own. So... Oh. You know. Well, why are you why are you helping me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Skid, no, <laughs> we're like, no. I mean, you're not even supposed to like walk <laughs> regular. Teacher, we're supposed to have worm homework. Um, <laughs> teacher, we're supposed to have worm sign. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, uh, well, Aurelius, I think, uh, would would kind of let you know that 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 is a danger, uh, and now you're worried about a worm uh, coming toward you as well. What would everybody like to do? I think we need to know whether we hide from these people, we fight them, probably not a good idea, or we bring them around to our way of thinking. I feel as though that they are going to... They're going to come to us. This is their desert. They know its ways. They will find us. Mm -hmm. It's, It's dangerous enough for them to come out here, given the dangers... So maybe they're not hostile. I I'll think that we should clean. prepare for it, but hmm. given what we know, they might not be our enemies. And uh, very much so, exactly what you said, Corn. I think that our interests could align. If they are not standing with this Muad'Dib, this Paul, then they would want to see his downfall brought about by competitors in spice. The enemy of my enemy is sometimes my friend. Mm. Yes. I believe great. the greatest question is, who will you be on this day, Pharos? I feel like we're deep enough in the... De- yeah, good question. 
Good question. Yes, yeah. is a strategy to be a to be another um, Fremen or to be uh, an offworlder. If they're rogue and and perhaps suspicious of and at war with other Fremen, it might be uh, might be in my interest to go as. What about a planetologist? Yeah, mm. I, uh, yeah, yeah, I think that's a good guy. I mean, you, I never you wear the planetologist shirt. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have the Arakeen Planetology University. Uh, <laughs> 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 like the Harvard uh, sweatshirt. Um, <laughs> yeah. Are you um, going to make yourself into Liet Kynes? I mean, I could take a swing. I, I don't. I don't think I've ever seen them. Although, all, I, I, but I guess that could be a role. Because um, we lived on Arrakis for quite a while. When, is there an when author's he would have been page <laughs> in, in, this, in this big tome that I carry? Is there an author's by page? <laughs> there is not a photo of the author uh, standing in front of a m- mantle, oh, uh, nuts. holding his writer award. Um, no, I think that uh, I think that though it's possible that you've seen him before. Do you want to roll to try to create that exact guy, or do you want to just create, or do you want to create some other guys that's just sort of more uh, something a little safer, a little easier? I'm going to I'm going to go for uh not not to not to tamp down suspense but I think it I think it's it's just wise to be a planetologist not necessarily yeah, the, the most famous <laughs> the planetologist who is who who, who is dead. I might know is connected in tangential ways to the Fremen theology that they are heretical to very good. Um, so you adopt a, a studious uh, gentleman's demeanor. Is, is this correct? That's correct. Okay. Um, so you look like kind of a random scientist, a, a scholar of some sort. Yeah. Love it. Okay. Uh, very good. Um, I can tell you that uh, looking out of your little uh, periscope, um, you see uh, that the, uh, the figures that you were clocking earlier have gone behind some dunes. It's going to be a little while before they arrive, uh, but uh, moving your periscope around, you see um, kind of far off in another direction, sand sort of uh, splashing into the air. Leave. this is what the ancients referred to as deja vu. <laughs> we have been here before, have we not? And then I, I think we should scan for stony outcroppings. Um, rocks that we could that we could uh get up on to elude shy elude right um you know what everybody there is one um and uh it's not too far away um it's kind of a roll away um if everybody would like to try for it or you could stay inside of your uh craft it's quite large it's large enough to hold a sandworm right so did we remember to pack our ground car in the cargo bay or? Well, you know what? It's something that um, I, th- I believe that Skid's character now has as an asset. So yes, you do. Okay. Mm. Right? Wouldn't I mean, why Why wouldn't you? It would fit in a cargo yeah, bay. It's, I, added it to, I, I think I added it to my assets. So okay. Yeah. So I, you I have would, it. We, yeah. We've got it. Nice. Wanna, t- let's, did it, I, if it's not damaged in the crash, I say we hop on and. Did we describe it? Is it like an old school like Cadillac kind of look? Or? <laughs> it's more yeah, it's like, like a, a hydraulics. It's, it's more like a rickety old rider. truck without wheels. It's got okay. ground effects. Um. <laughs> bop, 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 bop. Um, you um, you head back into the cargo hold, and uh, the ground car is kind of like uh, uh, you know, it's kind of at a odd angle. Um, it it was really shaken and smashed about in the crash. Um, uh, like if because it has a suspensor field, if people tried in concert to kind of push it, they might be able to push it back down to the position it needs to get into. Uh, and then you could try to take it across the sand before the sandworm gets here, but it's on its way. I One lift question. a judging eye at uh, Aurelius and say, we have to get you driving lessons. Uh, yes. I, um, One question quickly. Yes, please. Is it suspensor fields? Do they do the same thing as like shields do as far as driving worms insane? Or is or they they don't do that? Do we know? Um, that is a hmm. really, really great question. I don't hmm. believe that they do the same thing. They are not okay. a shield. If you fire at a suspensor field, the blast goes through it. So okay. they are different. Okay, cool. Um, then, uh, yeah, then, so yeah I, let's try to move it, get it, get it into position. 
Yeah. Then, uh, yes. Yeah, so what you're doing is you're trying to like, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, the size of a truck, but it does have these sort of anti-grav suspensors on it. So it's a little easier to move than a truck. And the four of you are trying to like get it off of the wall where it's kind of like smashed up against and get all these like cargo uh, boxes out of the way and get it down to where you can just drive it out the back of your ship, even though your ship is currently sideways. So who is going to be the primary actor here? And the other uh, players can assist with this if they'd like to. I feel like it's my asset. I might as well do the honors. Do Very it. good. Sure. Great, but I but so, I will take all the assistance you have to offer. <laughs> okay, very good. Um, so I will ask uh, first, uh, which uh, which skill and drive are you going to use here? Um. <laughs> now here's where I may have to turn into uh, old time lawyer to. <laughs> now, I, now I understand, Your Honor, that, that move would seem to be uh, the most. Uh, <laughs> The most apropos of the uh, skills in question. However, could it not be argued that discipline, um, I think the focus uh, in attendance of body control, might be apropos to maneuvering the gyroscopic uh, controls of such a device? Sustained, counselor. <laughs> Sustained. Very wise, Your Honor. Very wise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, you uh, you can do that. That that makes perfect sense to me. So, all right, great. Especially um, if I'm if I'm taking the lead on the move, then discipline might help to guide people as we move in concert. Uh, so I'll do discipline and, um, geez, like uh, this seems like almost like a duty thing. I gotta, we gotta. I'm trying to. Yeah, I'm trying to a, um, work for the good of the work for the good of the crew. That's great. Now check this out. You don't roll yet. We're going to find out if uh, how your friends help. So anybody that wants to help put together uh, the same pool, I think. Well, I, you could use a different drive, but you're going to all roll discipline uh, okay. to try to help him. You're working in concert. He's kind of giving you orders uh, and you're going to try to roll a drive plus discipline. You're going to roll one die, not two dice this time. And okay. the successes that you three get will be added to Pharos's successes if he is successful. Okay? Ooh, Does that make okay. sense? Yes. So um, so I so, still have to be successful, but if I am, these successes are added to my successes. You have to score at least one success. Gotcha. And then those successes are added to yours. Okay. So um, can I have uh, our friend Mother Pomini, uh, our friend uh, Aurelius, and our friend Corin all roll their one die, and it's a discipline plus whatever drive you like. You're just assisting. But you said we're only rolling one die. Just one die. That's one. how assistance okay. works in this gotcha. game. Okay. Okay. I uh, one success for Aurelius. How'd you do, Corin? Uh, I rolled a three under a seven. Nice. You rolled a success. And how about uh, Mother Pomony? Uh, I. So well, I don't touch things. That's not a thing that I do. I, I also um, discipline is command, uh, and I did not succeed. You did not. Okay, so you have two extra successes coming to you, uh, my friend. All right. Here's where I tell you that the amount of successes needed to move an entire ground car into position here are four. Okay, okay. So you have two extra coming to you, but you need to get. You need to get two. You need to succeed and then get another one. Okay. Do um do we have any momentum left? I have down. I think I have three momentum here for you. That okay. doesn't seem right. Is it, no one. Um, maybe we were just at one. one. We were but at one. Yeah. Okay. It's a Sorry new about scene, that. Though is that? Oh, it's a new scene. So even that one is potentially gone away. <sighs> okay. But we have. We can spend threat though. How would you like some threat? threat? How would you I like would some love threat? some threat. You're going to give me two threat and take a die? That's right, sir. Do it. Okay. All right. Here comes the three rolls. I got to get... Oh, boy. So this is actually not that great of a roll for me, but I, uh, I've i got to get under 11 to get under uh, um, duty and move. You got to do it twice. Oh, boy. One failure. Oh, no. Two failures. Oh no! no. <laughs> I go under my focus of five. Um, you are you are not able to. Wait wait wait! Uh, I've got one more coming because I bought a thread. Here we go. Oh, okay, it's gonna be a three. Okay. It's gonna be a three. It's gonna be it's gonna be a three. It's gonna be a four. It's gonna be five. Oh. It's fine. No no it's a three. Guys, everything's fine. Here Be we go. Becca called it. It's fine. It's gonna be three. <laughs> oh 
<laughs> and Alas, it was a 10. Any, it doesn't work for Zoom. It does work. Work. It still works. But it's only three successes. Uh, yes, it's only three successes. So um, basically, oh. as you're pulling the ground card down, it, you guys lose control of it. It smashes into the ground. It's like upside down. There's no way to get it back now because it's a, a giant heavy thing. And the suspensor field is on the bottom facing up at you right now. And there's no way to get it rolling. So now you have precious little time. Are you going to run out the back of the cargo bay and run for that rock outcropping? Or are you going to try to stay in the safety of your spacecraft and, and hope things go okay. I think we all know, just from our little knowledge of Fremen culture, of being on Arrakis, this ship is not safe here from a worm. And the less is gonna run. Yeah, run for the hills, not in a pattern. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. As I'm shaking the using my scarf to like wipe the sand out of my mouth from the fall. Um, this is not a conflict. This is going to be a single roll to just kind of get across the sand quickly. Yeah. I have really bad news for you though. The, 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 the sandworm, uh, you can see now just, you can see the top of its ridges breaking the sand just like, you know, 300 meters out from the ship as you exit the cargo bay of the ship. Um, there is a really strange sensation of all of the sand around you moving, but there's not a lot of sound. There is, however, a smell, a s sharp tang of cinnamon is suddenly filling <laughs> the air. Um, and uh, the whole thing feels very surreal, like you're not part of reality anymore. Um, but that rock outcropping is, uh, it's reachable with a single run, uh, and let's have each of you do it one at a time. The consequences of failure here are quite high, and I might have to give someone a defeat, and that defeat might be a death and swallowed by a sandworm. Don't do that. <gasps> Don't do that, Jared. Oh my stars. Okay. <laughs> it can happen. It can happen. Yeah. So uh, here we go. I would like to uh, see, uh, since the Duchess was the one that was running out the door first, please give me that roll. What roll are you going to use to get it to that rock out outcropping? I think justice, the universe owes you nothing. I have to, uh, nothing is owed to me. I must get this for myself. Uh-huh. And, uh, battle tactics. Battle tactics, okay. Uh, you're going to use battle here. Okay, um, I'm going to allow it in this case. It's kind of like you know, this is this has become a battlefield all of a sudden. Don't roll it yet. We're gonna all roll at once because we're all running at once. Okay. Um, Pharos, what are you gonna use? Again, discipline, which I can argue makes sense here because of the skill, the focus of body control, um, and uh, power. Power belongs to the righteous. I, I am not meant to die here. Mm -hmm. My cause is righteous. I, but, but. God helps those that help themselves. I must expend all my power to receive the blessing of power. So we have no momentum in the pool as we uh, head into these uh, rolls. <laughs> Whew, okay, um, let's uh, ask Aurelius, what are you going to roll? Uh, I will use move with my grace focus to move in a way to confound the worm. And I will use my faith drive. Uh, my statement is the, because with my newfound devotion to the Bene Gesserit order, the Bene Gesserit path will guide my steps. So that seems <laughs> quite literally. appropriate. Yeah, yes, literally. quite literally. And finally, Corin, what are you going to use? I am going to do what most humans do in very dire, oh shit situations and rely on faith. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> also <laughs> use my <laughs> discipline in survival. Uh, oh, that because makes... that's, survival's very important to me right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So a couple of you have really good focuses for this, which could help you. I mean, it needs to help you. I can tell you that um, I'm going to go ahead and levy. Uh, this is really tough because, uh, but I think it's two successes to get to this rock, rock oh, out man. cropping. What? Okay. Yes. So we does anybody to want to, so give, give me threat. Okay, you want to give me threat? I think we should all give him a threat. <laughs> Is everybody giving me a threat? Or a threat. You each gotta, get an extra I, die. I got to roll under a 14. Hmm. Yeah, let's, I mean. High stakes, threat. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, we should each give threat. 
Because okay, I have a t I mean, my threat now, I, it was already at, uh, let's see. It was at... Yeah, I'm at, I'm at, s I'm at 10 now. Yeah, that's oh, right. Geez. Okay. What? Um, yeah, I'm at 10 threat, and boy, if you don't think Ooh, I'm going to spend that, you are wrong. Okay. <sighs> um, so, uh, here we go. I'm, see, I can be a hard GM, too. I'm like Troy. <laughs> I'm a meanie. All right. Uh, here we go, uh, everybody. Uh, let me just narrate for a second. As the thing's head bursts up out of the sand, you can feel the ground beneath you just plummeting down into the earth and the ship that you left out there is like like flipping again and it's flipping toward all of you and it's blocking out the sun as it as the worm flips it over and it's coming down on all of you and you're trying to run out of its shadow as the ship flops towards you and roll <gasps> Any, can I uh, use your uh, uh, re-roll? <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad I took that threat. <gasps> oh my yes. god, me too. All yeah. right, so who succeeded? Oh no, uh, I want to roll a different thing. Fuck, I'm gonna <laughs> die. But if I had to use my prana bindu, I would live. But I, I picked the wrong trait. Who succeeded? I did. Okay. I got three successes. I got oh, a complication. I, I got a nat oh. twenty, oh. and I did not succeed. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. So, um, Grace. So it looks like the Duchess is the only one who failed. Is that correct? Yeah, I got okay. two failures, but I got a crit. I got a four on one die, so I got the two. So you got the two you needed, and, uh, and it sounds like, Corin, you generated a point of momentum. Um, and, uh, Corin, this point of momentum. Uh, wait, let me let me just make sure. Pharos, did you generate any momentum? I did. The, 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 we were trying to hit two successes, right? That's right. Yeah. And I got three. Okay, so yes. great. Oh. So there's two I, did, I don't think I did, because I, I, I got the two. Okay, I'm sorry. So I got it wrong. Pharos, you generated a point of momentum. I'm going to let you do one thing. Me. Other than run to that outcropping, and you have to okay. spend this momentum to do it. What is the one thing that you do as you're running to that outcropping? And currently, the ship is listing over. It's listing uh, over to smash to you all. Yeah, us. It's like Prometheus. <sighs> so, it's it's okay. It's beyond the worm. Part of me would be like, I place a thumper to distract, but that's not going to do anything about the crushing ship. <laughs> um, the th one thing I will do is still with that bodily control, like just sh shift over and see see if I, I I feel like this this complication maybe or. or like, obviously, the, the Duchess is stumbling. Her fear coming out thank from you, under her. Thank you. Yes. Sometimes I need the player's help. And that is the exact complication. The Duchess has fallen. The Duchess has fallen to her knees. Uh, and uh, the ship is listing over to crush her. And so I will attempt to, with that um, bodily control, attempt to sweep around, throw my hand out like a, like a whip cord to catch her and pull her to her feet so that we can then run the rest of the way. You're spending the momentum? Yes. I'll allow her to piggyback with you. Um, you, <gasps> your, your arm actually stretches longer than an arm should. Oh, yeah, yeah. And Mr. Fantastic, you see yeah. it's like bone, <laughs> like it, it looks as though my shoulder and my elbow dislocate as the, uh, as, <laughs> as the hand goes towards you almost like a rope. But when you touch it, it feels like flesh. Oh. And, and you see like agony in the eyes of, of Pharos, and you realize that maybe for the first time that as these shifts and changes take place, that it is painful. Ooh. And like, uh, as he pulls you up and uh, out of the sand. Wow. It's so cool and gross. The ship <sighs> crashes back to the earth as the worm sort of hits it head on and then turns, you know, because uh, it is too big for the worm to just consume. It's just, it's too big of a ship. Um, and you all make it to the rock outcropping and you're climbing up the rock outcropping to get out of reach of the worm. And when you come up over the lip of the rock outcropping, you realize that it's the beginning of a shelf leading off into the distance. And on this shelf of rock stand uh, at least eight Fremen uh, huh. in white robes. And they're all standing looking at you 
and looking uh, at the worm down below. Uh, and they, uh, one of them says, Look at you. Why do you taunt Shai Halud? He has been merciful this day. Our apologies. Yeah. He walks forward and he uh, kneels down at where the Duchess is, you know, I mean, you guys have just barely crawled up over the lip of this rock. He looks down at you where you're laying there and is like, why should I not kick you back down to the Maker Worm and let him fulfill the destiny that was just robbed of him? Because we come to you with an opportunity to provide you with the justice that you seek. In the name of the Bene Gesserit. <laughs> the Bene Gesserit. <laughs> you think that they know what we want? Is it not worth listening to? Mm. Bring them back to the siege. <laughs> and uh, Fremen start pulling you up. Uh, and leading you uh, along the rock shelf back toward uh, where eventually you can you, you couldn't see it with your periscope before because they're so well sort of camouflaged by the rock but there are these wind traps and they're these big sort of vent like um, obstructions that kind of uh, are, look like you know they're perfectly camouflaged to look like part of the rock but when you get close you see all the slats that catch the wind and draw just a little bit of moisture from it uh, and they walk you through these massive wind trap constructions uh, and then uh, the uh, Fremen leader turns around and says stop here, no further I will not take you into Siege Alburn until I know what it is you are offering if I do not like your offer the desert can take you perhaps you will rendezvous again with Shai Hulud. Might we know your name? I am Naib of this siege. I am called Dab. It is an honor. Uh, I take a deep bow. We, I follow suit. Me too. As do I. All right. He's like, why are you bowing to me? Get up. I do. How did you find us out here? And what do you want? I can't trust you, so I'm not going to let you into my community. Do you enjoy the freedom to rule yours amongst yourselves without being oppressed by others? Yes, and we have always lived this way. The recent changes in how our brethren uh, behave their jihad, it has not changed our way of life. We maintain the old ways here and seek out burn. We too seek to live out in the old ways without being oppressed by others. <laughs> you say this to me. Look at you. You have adopted the ways of the foreigners, of the newcomers to our planet. You expect me to believe that you know the old ways? <laughs> Wearing come, different come, garb. Come, what is your offer? I, I wish to laugh more. <laughs> Wearing a different garb does not mean that we don't seek the same things for ourselves. Tell me what this is that you seek, and I will decide whether I seek it as well. If I may. I was once a duchess of this planet, and that was taken from me. As much too may be taken from your siege. You are being hunted. You are being sought after because you will not succumb, because you honor these old ways that we respect in you. It is our desire to help you maintain them by taking away power from those that your brethren have pledged fealty to. And the only way to do this is by creating competition 
in the Imperium. That is the gift we can offer you, which of course will help us as well. Therefore, you can see our interests are aligned. If I am being hunted, it is because someone has crashed a starship on my doorstep. Why should I not throw you to your authorities that you seek to rebel against? Why should I not give you up and keep the location of my siege hidden and safe? Shai Praise Halud God keeps that, that for have, you. Praise Shai Halud that we have come to you and first. For our coming heralds, the coming of others. If it was not us, it would have been hundreds of others to drive you from this desert and claim this siege for their own. Shaitan has placed his messenger on the throne of this planet, and we would cast him off. Is this not enough for you? It is not enough. You have still not told me what you want from me. <laughs> I'm, 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 what we want from you is simple. Be, be honest. Your aid in finding a young Shai Halud that oh. might be willing to create this competition elsewhere in the Imperium. You want what? We want a worm. We want you to help us get it. I'm spending two threat. <laughs> they are completely um, disgusted and horrified Makes sense. by this suggestion. <laughs> yeah. I they, can't be coy, Jared. You keep no, asking. <laughs> I gotta well, tell him. <laughs> uh, Becca Scott, you are the best player, but I did tell the party that taking a worm from the desert would be viewed as sacrilege by the Fremen. Uh, and now in this role-playing scene, you have doubled <laughs> down on it. Um, and so uh, he goes, that is blasphemy. We will take your water and let the memory of you fade forever. You are uh, you are abominations against Shai Halud. Uh, and uh, he and his fellow Fremen uh, pull, start to pull their Chris knives. Um, I'm going to make the scene... Um, Fuck. Was uh, I, I'm gonna make a trait threatening again, which means that it's 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 harder now. You can get yeah. one last uh, hail mary attempt to save yeah. this diplomatic uh, diplomatically. We never really discussed it's what our like cover story was for this, yeah. <laughs> for this little interaction. Um, well, you had a lot of <clears throat> other things to worry about. Yeah. Uh, Aurelius, like he throws up his hands. And he says, no, no, do not doom yourselves as well as us. What of the prophecy? And he looks at the Duchess, hoping that there is some element in the myths that the Bene Gesserit have planted in these different systems that could be applied to our situation that could save our ass right now. Um, yeah, uh, I love that. I love that the Duchess is the one that got you into hot water here, and you're like throwing it back to the Duchess. <laughs> <laughs> this yeah, is but, a hey, let's go mechanical. Let's go mechanical. I think that we should. Um, so this is going to be uh, a high difficulty roll because of how far it's progressed. But um, if you can come up with a way to kind of manipulate their, you know, basically what 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 uh, Aurelius is, is throwing to you is manipulate their religious beliefs. It's what the Bene Gesserit do. So you need to figure out a way to do that. And then you need to roll. What are you going to roll? Uh, happy to take help, friends. I would say this is definitely an attempt of knowledge of past events. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, sure. For those who don't know, in the world of, of Dune, the, the, the Bene Gesserit seed myths on, de on developing planets mm -hmm. that will, such that generations later, um, they can appear as the fulfillment of prophecy they themselves planted Centuries ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. Good. This is where Moabdib yeah. came from. The whole idea of like Paul rising. Yeah. That it was like the so result of these. Check prophecies. that rock carving. Right. Right. So and it's if like these stick figures of us. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but, if, but if these, if this is like a heretical sect that does not accept that that uh, Paul Atreides is the voice from another world that's supposed to that's supposed to 
be this messianic figure. I mean, perhaps you could try to convince them that it's you <laughs> or well, or yeah. that he's not the right one. I mean, this is like right. Christianity versus Judaism that like, right. Just not, right. The, not just not my savior yet. I'm still waiting. Right. It sounds like you've hit upon a, a strategy of sorts. Would you like to uh, turn this into a dice roll now? I would, but I have to say something cool. Uh, <laughs> of course. Oh, well, here's how I like to do it. You roll, and if you roll well, you get to say something cool. But if you roll poorly, I tell you what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, in this Hail Mary moment to not all die horribly at the Chris knives of the, these Fremen, I would like to use my immense knowledge not only from myself and my Benny Jezera training on Wallach 9, but also from looking back into all of the collective knowledge of those who trained me on uh, in through the agony and I inherited their other memory. So mm. if you don't mind. You want three automatic successes on this roll, yes. and I am going to deny that request, and here's why. The uh, other memory helps you remember things. It does not help you talk to a Fremen, and that is what you are doing right now. You uh, are possibly going to use knowledge from your other memory here, but you are doing, you are making a last ditch effort at diplomacy right now by manipulating their religious beliefs. That's talking. That's, uh, you know, perhaps, for example, if Pharos were making the role, his charm focus would matter. Um, do you have a focus and communicate, or is there another skill that you'd like to use? Uh, what I do you have think? Uh, communicate definitely i have inspiration inspiration oh my god that would yes. that would work in this context cool. so um, i need an inspiration role and you need uh to give you have zero momentum but i'm gonna be really nice you need at least well i'm sorry it's a threatening situation you need two successes to uh to to get them to stop with their knives right now uh i would like to use power uh, as well as communicate, the Bene Jesuit will control the Imperium. And then I would like to give you Perfect. one threat. I know you have eight, but yeah, um, I want it. another die. Okay, yeah, good idea. Okay. Oh, and because um, this is a communicate test, can Aurelius help assist you to reroll failures? You can yeah, reroll yes. a failed die. Okay. So perhaps he's like, told you some of these. Yes, no. Yeah. Yeah. My communicate is lousy. <gasps> You gotta be kidding me! I rolled three sevens. Oh, nice! And, uh, wow. <laughs> these were the Dune came with the book dice, so they've been blessed uh, by Shia Halud Modifius, and um, <laughs> so that's six successes because yes. uh, inspiration. Wow. I needed seven, uh, eight or below. Moly. Wow! You only needed four, and you got six. I mean, Incredible. you only needed. I'm sorry, you only needed two, and you got six. So you got four momentum is what you generated. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what you get for free. Great. You are inspired by your other memory and by Aurelius, really, uh, who gives you the hint that this is the way to go, to really, really kind of stress the fact that Paul Atreides is not the Kwisatz Haderach. He is not the Chosen One. He is not the Messiah. You know it, and I know it. And when you start saying that, they stop pulling out their Chris knives and their eyes go wide. And now if you'd like to spend any of this momentum that you just generated, the four momentum you just generated, I can give you additional benefits to the things that you're saying. And then I'll, of course, allow you to say it. I'm sorry for putting words in your mouth. No, I like words in my mouth. I did not yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no problem. So you stress the fact that he is not really the chosen one. That seems to be maybe where their uh, where their heresy lays. Would you like to spend uh, some uh, momentum to get some additional uh, additional um, knowledge? Absolutely. Just add a game for a moment. I'm wondering if either we should present them with who we think the uh, the cho the Kizat Sadrak is, or if they have their own. Either way, I'd like to spend mm. momentum. How many? Uh, th this is good. I mean, if you spend one, I'm just going to give you an additional detail that you kind of weave in. That's part of the the missionary protectiva's sort of uh, party line that will manipulate them. Yeah. Okay. You. Uh, you. All you know, know to say is that uh, the worm is God because they sort of worship the worm. Uh, and if you stress that, in addition to stressing that Paul is not the Messiah, you feel like you're gonna 
you're going to get somewhere with them. So um, let me hear what you say now that you've been given a little bit of like knowledge that you can drop on them. He is traitorous and ruinous. He has manipulated the other Fremen and he has taught them uh, that he is higher than the Shai Halud. And there is nothing higher than the Shai Halud. These saints know it. We know it. And you know it. Yes. Yes, you know the truth. That the Messiah will come in the form of, of a worm. He must take the form of a worm. It is prophesied. It is the only truth. How do you know this? How do you know this, Outworlder? Because... Messages have been sent to us from that worm that we are to find him. Them, her, she. Yes. I cannot... I cannot give you what you ask for, but you may enter my siege. Come. Uh, and he, uh, if, if you'll follow them, the Fremen will take you into siege Alburn. Um, do the other guards have to kill each other because they pulled their Chris knives out? Um, <laughs> oh. they started to. Did I say they fully pulled them out? Just checking. They started to, everybody. If I said that I fully pulled them out, go uh, download the episode, <laughs> go to that part of the uh, audio, use a program to delete, edit out that part. <laughs> And then you have your very own copy of a correct <laughs> canon, <laughs> canonically sound uh, game of Dune. Okay. Awesome. I don't think um, you even said it. Oh, oh well, maybe I, I just did, wanted them to um, fight each other so they can't hurt us. Maybe I did say it, but now everybody has a solution to have a canonically correct game. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, you are now in the cave uh, entrance of Siege Alburn, massive, gigantic. You know, I mean, a couple apartment blocks could maybe fit inside of this main entrance area. And you see uh, where uh, like sort of uh, platforms, stone, stone shelves sort of lead up to the wind traps where you were standing before. Um, and uh, there are paths back to uh, the various Yali where different Fremen live with their families. There are paths into an area where they manufacture s still suits and other things that they need for survival gear. Um, and there is a path uh, that is guarded by several uh, Fremen who kind of stand at attention, kind of guarding that area. Uh, and um, your knowledge, Corin, would tell you that that is probably where the ceremonial uh, portion of the cave is located. And I kind of give a head nod to uh, Delessa and with hand signals, kind of let her know the direction. I Dob. acknowledge it. I, I want to ask Dob if is there any way we may contribute our skills to the betterment of the siege? I am not sure why you have been given this message, uh, but I still do not. You still do not know our ways. No, there is no way for you to contribute to our siege. Very well. You, you and I will talk soon. Rest. Heal yourselves. You may even have a portion of our water. And then we shall talk in several hours. We owe you much. Um, uh, it, does, it does appear that you can explore a little bit if you wish, or you can wait for your meeting with him. Let me know what you'd like to do. I gotta grab Pharaohs by both arms and say, you saved my life. I owe you everything. You have been so kind to me over the years. Even on Wallach Nine, when others looked at me with disdain. You never did. You have already repaid me for this, and I know in times to come you will repay me again. It would be my honor. I'll never forget that time you almost killed me. So maybe it's... <laughs> um, as you wait for your audience with Dob, as you wait for your audience with Dob, 
it's perhaps uh, a smart thing to think carefully about what you're going to say to him, because the suggestion that you take a worm didn't go over very well with him. Yeah, uh, I, am I the first <laughs> best person? Uh, we'll see. Oh, uh, well, uh, you, you're the best person at uh, throwing your weight around, Duchess, but uh, uh, perhaps <laughs> a different, perhaps a di- different approach is, is required. Um, you know what? I'll give you some time to think about what you're going to say to him and how you're going to get this worm out of this cave or get a worm into your broken spaceship. Good Lord, this mission is doomed. I don't know how you're going to get yourselves out of this one. Oh, boy, you're in quite a pickle. We'll find out what happens after this word from our sponsors. Welcome to the Siege, everybody. Uh, It's a cozy little spot in the middle of the uh, Arrakis Desert. Uh... It's sandy, it's, it's, it's warm, it's definitely warm, but it's also cool. You're down here beneath the crust of Arrakis, um, <laughs> and this is where the Fremen live. It's where they make their home. It's where they gather their moisture, where they gather uh, the water of their enemies uh, and uh, collect it. Um, and so our, our party has made it here. They have, uh, they have said enough to gain the hospitality of Dob, the naib of this siege, this rogue siege, siege Alburn, but they haven't necessarily uh, convinced him uh, of what they want. So I would like for the players, you know, we, we've jumped into some things and we had to because you were put on the spot. I mean, starships were crashing down on your heads. Like, you didn't have time to think, but now... That was on me. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but now Dob has given you some time to think and plan. And so you, I, I, I throw it to the players. What are you going to do next? What is the smart move here to get what you want? This is First, I take in the deep scent, the potent scent of all these warm bodies collecting water all together. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes, and in the books it even says that you can that the that the inside of the siege smells differently. That you actually can smell like a human smell inside of a siege. It's close. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, I've, and I just want to touch on. I feel like Pharaoh's having to that little conversation with uh, um, Reverend Mother Pomony is kind of like, <laughs> why did you save her? it like in the three lakhs apartment is just a benedictor witch. So, <laughs> and it's like. And there is something he can't, he can't even name it, but it's, it's maternal love that he's feeling. Aww. Like the Tlilaxu don't have mothers in the conventional sense. It is an extremely patriarchal culture. So he's like, there's, there's some very like, there's a Freudian tangle inside of Because Reverend Mama take care of you, that's <laughs> why. Yeah. Speaking of maternal love, I have none of it, and I take away one point of momentum as we enter <laughs> oh, a new no. scene. Oh, <laughs> you have two cool. momentum, according to my calculations, and I have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, I don't know, it's like eight. Oh, I'm, I, I'm I have threatened. nine yeah. as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay, um, nine, yeah, yeah nine. nine here. Yeah, you should have nine. We shouldn't waste time. No. That room, that room that we saw where the ritual takes place. I feel like there are many secrets to be learned there. If there is such a chamber in this siege, then for all we know, there could be a stunted worm there right now. Exactly. Well, as I see it, we have two options. We can either continue along our path of trying to convince them to let us take a worm, or we can deceive them and take it without their knowledge. Or we turn our attentions to the deserts and try to lure one of the larger ones, bring it aboard the ship. The three options. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. Spoken the like a mentat. Those are the three options as I see them, but, but which will you choose? I do think it necessary to state what we have been through just now. We survived. The four of us together continue to survive. Perhaps there is 
a Kisak Sadarak worm that wishes for us to complete this goal. Perhaps there is a purpose greater than ourselves to why. We must create this new planet and let it thrive in our names. The four of us. They will um, have parades in our honor. Sounds like Mother Pomony is drinking her own Kool-Aid. Yes, yes, yes. she is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Why? Pom, wonderful. That's in what I call a, it. <laughs> in such a world, there can be a union of that which was once put asunder. And those that have been so long at odds can draw together for the first time. Yes, yes, my friend. You see it too. What could be? I think we weigh these options. Corin, you investigate that, what you've spoken of. And after I've had my meeting with this Dob, perhaps things will be more clear. Very I good. I try um, to gain whatever knowledge I can. And I'm Aurelius, intrigued. Oh, go ahead. If you are going to inspect this chamber, uh, Corin, then perhaps I can simply move among the people here and just see what the the general atmosphere is and attitude and uh, what may serve us in the course that we are taking for we tread on very dangerous ground at every moment that would be wise uh, Aurelius uh, if you would advise me you are a keen observer. What do we think is the best strategy in convincing them? Should I lean into asking for their aid or not mention anything they might find um, heretical at this time? Uh, yes, my lady. Well, you, of course, uh, I am at your service. You must understand that the Fremen are single minded. Uh, uh, no offense, Corin, but they are quick to take offense at anything that may they may deem heretical. It may set us back quite a bit. I, I do not know. I will have to, I will have to take in more information to give you a better answer. I am afraid. It seems, right. it seems to me that we must open our ears and listen to them. And show them that we are as deeply steeped in their beliefs as they are seems to me that none of these courses is easier than the other, but perhaps or, or the, perhaps a poor choice of words. All are dangerous, but perhaps slightly less dangerous than riding one of the great beasts that nearly destroyed us all is absconding with a small one. Bringing it back onto our damaged vessel and seeking to Return. There are so many uncertain factors. So it sounds to me, as your game master, like people are, they want more information before they act. Um, yeah. So it sounds to me like the plans are for Pharos to kind of listen among the Fremen here, for Corin to perhaps investigate that back room somehow, and for uh, perhaps Aurelius and uh, Mother Pomony to have their audience with Dob and see what information they can glean from Dob. So let's do those things. Let's start with the one that sounds the most exciting to me, and that is Corin doing a little, well, I don't know that Corin is going to sneak. Perhaps Corin will talk her way into the ceremonial quarters of the siege, but the ceremonial quarters of the siege are guarded at all times because uh, it is a sacred space. So um, Corin, uh, when you look at those guards standing ready, uh, what what do you want to do? So there, those guards are definitely not budging. Um, I mean, they do change throughout the day. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, they're like an honor guard. It's like, uh, the, the, the guards at Buckingham palace. They're not necessarily there to really fight crime. Uh, <laughs> they're there as sort of a symbolic of how important the space is. Well, perhaps if this was properly timed with the changing of the guard and perhaps uh, Pharos would maybe cause a distraction that I may sneak in there. I understand entirely. 
I have been known at times to have a flair for the theatrical. Ah, uh, yes, House, Hood, <laughs> House Hooden goes back to its roots with a little theatrical display. <laughs> I'm going to call that Pharos assisting you. So, Pharos, why don't you make a dice pool for your distraction and roll one die, and then we will have Corin put together her dice pool. Hmm? Okay. Um, I feel like I am on this mission, and my power statement is I will have what is owed to me, I'm tired of being ruled by others. I'm taking this and I will use, so I'll use power and I will use my stealth, my move. Skill. Very good. So don't roll yet. Let's see how, um, let's see how our friend Pharos's assistance goes for, and then he can add, uh, he can add uh, successes. I'm going to say that normally I would say you need two successes to do this. But uh, because you are a Fremen and because you studied that ceremonial room, you only need one success. Ooh. Um, Ooh. So uh, Pharos might just be giving you momentum here in a moment, which you guys kind of need. Um, so let's go ahead and see how Pharos. Pharos, what dice pool are you putting together and roll your one die? <clears throat> okay. And, I, and I'm rolling one die, but I'm still trying to get under the combination of a skill and a drive. That's correct. Great. I'm, I'm using communicate, charm, and uh, uh, truth. Okay, great. Um, so here we go. All right. Rolling under 13. <laughs> <laughs> what did you? <laughs> oh, no. I rolled the a natural 20. <laughs> glasses oh, came no, off because I rolled on. a natural 20. Well, I have, good, I have very good news for you. According to the assistance rules, damn, can can assisting cause create complications? Complica create complications? Ooh. I guess it I guess it can, right? I mean like logically that makes sense. Oh. Um let me see. I, I, I'm going to I'm going to actually look this up a little bit, but uh, let's let's go ahead and put together your dice. You've put together your dice pool. It's time for you to roll a uh, corner. I told you only one success was necessary. <laughs> Was it? Alright. I rolled a 19 and a 12. <laughs> Wait, the 12 makes it. The 12 is a success. See, okay. there's one. Okay. So, there's a, I, so I, 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 don't, I can't look it up fast enough. I want us to continue with the story. I'm going to say that the complication um, does, does happen. And the complication is that Pharos... You, they are not amused with your antics. Uh, yeah, I don't yeah. know what you were trying to do to uh, distract them. It I think Pharaoh's just them. trying to sing like a sing like a Fremen folk song that he maybe heard. <laughs> oh and no! It's, and it's like it's like minstrel. Oh god! It's not. It's <laughs> it's not good. The, uh, um, not landing. The it's Fremen not landing at all. The Fremen take uh, they take Pharaohs and they place him in um, uh, like isolation from the rest of you. And perhaps the rest of you don't even know this is happening because you're off doing your own things. But oh, yeah, Pharos is placed in isolation and he is being held now. Uh, he is uh, imprisoned. That is a giant complication, but I'm going with it. Um, so, uh, but the good news is, Corin, you do get into the ceremonial quarters. That does and actually sound like a pretty good distraction. <laughs> It is, yes. 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 <laughs> Mission accomplished. But, that, that's it, awesome. but yeah, it's complicated. It's been a really with bad song. complication. Yeah. It's complicated. Um, so, Corin, you get back into the ceremonial quarters, and they're just like the kind of replica in Liet Kynes' archive, but larger, of course. And there is another difference, which is that there is a deeper cave uh, down in the earth. Uh, in the center of the ceremonial quarters. So instead of just a little place where water is collected, there is kind of a hole in the ground that leads to a deeper cave and a really uh, fulsome smell of spice, of cinnamon, is, is wafting up out of that cave. Oh, I do that thing in like cartoons where they're like lifted up off the ground when they <laughs> smell something nice and they're just floating towards it. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Very good. Um, Someone's cooling a pie. 
Yes. <laughs> so um, you know uh, from your, your research earlier that this cave is sacred. I mean, very few people are allowed to enter it. Do you want to go and look inside or do you, or have you learned enough or what would you oh, like no, to do? Oh no, I do want to look inside. Um, very good. Is, uh, first of all, is there uh, looking on the things on the walls? Is there anything that's different from any more information? Mm, yes. To be learned. They keep talking about the uh, man in the shape of a worm and the worm in the shape of a man. Uh, and there's even sort of a pictorial version of this. It's like a worm with like a human face. Um, this is who they say the Messiah is going to be. Uh, oh, wow. that, that is prophesied. Um, but uh, you're not quite sure what to make of it because other Fremen don't believe such wild things. Uh, and definitely no one in your background believes that. But this group definitely believes it. This group believes it, yes. Okay. And this it's, is it's very nowhere good to clearer know. than in this room. Okay. So they, they, they uh, what you've learned is uh, they literally believe that there will be some sort of man worm hybrid that will arise and that will be the Messiah. Definitely going to have a discussion with Delessa after this about that in particular. Um, but I do absolutely want to get a little peek into that cave. Um, you look into the cave and um, it's just sand. Um, it's just sand uh, in like, it's not a huge space, but I would I would say that it's about the size of, oh, uh, a medium size house. In uh, I guess I should give it, you know, maybe maybe about a football field worth of sand laying on the ground. Uh, and uh, are you going to watch for a while, or are you going to head back? I'm going to kneel down onto this sand, and I'm going to with my fist. Bang down on the sand. <laughs> um, you <laughs> bang down on the sand here, uh, Corin, and suddenly all these particles of you realize that it's it's not wet, but it's sort of kind of gooey right beneath the dry sand on the surface. And what you have pounded your fist into is a pure mat, a mat of pure spice. And it blows oh, wow. up into your face and into your nostrils and into your mouth. Uh, and suddenly uh, everything around you seems to be moving differently, like really sped up or then kind of slowed down. And something is moving in the chamber with you. Something is rising up out of the sand. Uh, and it is, in fact, uh, it has the face of a man and it has arms, but it is a worm. Oh, it has four arms. It has five. It has 10 arms. Uh, you need to make some sort of roll because you are having some sort of crazy spice vision. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? If you'd like to regain control of yourself, you need to, you need to make a roll. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Right. Cool. 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 If cool, you would cool. like to ride the vision and let it go on a little longer, you can do that instead. <laughs> ride the right vision. Now, high you know? high ride stakes ride game. Worm. Let's ride the vision. <laughs> Get that okay. t-shirt. So riding the vision uh, means that you still need to make a roll. So what do you think you would roll to kind of see what you learn from this sort of spice overdose you've just given yourself? Faith and understand. I love that. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and um, in order for you to make sense of it, because it's this insane, like, uh, overstimulus that could really drive a person mad if they weren't ready for this, if they weren't, uh, you know, uh, of pure and intent and, uh, you know, a, a rock hard discipline, um, you need to get two successes or you're going to go quite mad from this. Gonna give you a threat for another die great i need i'm gonna this is where i'm going all in let's do okay. this here we go <sighs> i rolled a six a seven and a 16 so i got two successes you, you got two successes the exact amount you needed Whew. um and so you may now ask me uh one question because you only got enough to succeed one question about the future or you may decide something about the future. Ooh. Wow. That's huge, I know, but it's really hard 
to figure out what you want to decide. And 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 when you when you tell me like what you've decided, you've got to kind of give it to me as a vision. Tell me tell me what you see. So Corin is having a very religious experience. Mm-hmm. And everything that she has known about being a Fremen, about her other life, all of it's just kind of smoke and mirrors and like as though a gust of wind has swept away and like now she's seeing clearly for the first time. Hmm. And so she sees this. She has seen the prophecy that from the light we were in uh, the other cave and now she's seeing it for her in front of her very own eyes. And she wants so badly to communicate with this thing. <laughs> But, not knowing if she can or not, if she's searching deep into her own desires for what she would like to happen, she is imagining having succeeded on this other planet but it is not House Houdan. It is her own house. Oh, oh wow. Whoa. Um, so Corin, uh, Corin sees herself as the leader of her own house. Um, uh, you know, standing in front of some sort of an enormous, uh, you know, house complex. Uh, and uh, you... Um, you you see yourself as having succeeded and so i can tell you that you wow. look out over the over the sand on this new planet that you're going to land on and you see uh the worm moving and it's huge uh, and you know that you have communed with it and it is your creature uh that you have brought here and you are the mother corin you are the mother of this worm um, and now you snap back to reality, and I can tell you that the thing that you really learn is that th- although this thing is stunted, it's not the size of a normal worm, it is way too large for people to carry it. It's not like a dog. It's like, <laughs> you know, it would need to go, it would need to be somehow transported uh, somehow. Um, so that's the other thing that you see. Uh, and now you think that you probably need to get out of this sacred room uh, pretty soon or people are going to notice that you're going places you shouldn't be. Do I have a sense that if I wanted this creature to come with me, would it come with me um, when the time came? I think that you stick with your vision for a moment and you see all these branching pathways and you see that you need to decide right now. I told you you could decide something. You Mm -hmm. either decide that the worm listens to you or you decide that you become the leader of your own house on the other planet. I think that that is what happens with the branching uh, different uh, tributaries of this vision. So I choose one of those two paths. Mm Mm-hmm. I would say in the way Corin would justify it if I became the leader of my own house it means I succeeded in bringing him along Probably. so yes so that's-, that's the vision that is the vision as we said earlier so no this thing does not listen to you it does not hear you and in fact it is now um, headed towards you and opening its maw <gasps> and this is where I back away quickly. <laughs> Very good. Um, I will allow you to uh, escape the ceremonial quarters without being seen. They're still uh, locking away Pharos. Uh, if that works for you, does that work for you, Corin? Yes. Very good. Um, you can meet with Delessa and tell her what you've learned about the prophecies of these Fremen. I, I will definitely find her before she heads over to her meeting if I can. 
Are you hiding the fact that you've just been fundamentally mentally changed by your experience or are you being open about it? Not open, no. Uh, please, but- <laughs> please tell me what you're rolling to hide that you have just had a vision of you taking over the entire house <laughs> and that you've just had a really, I mean, frankly, traumatic spice trip. And um, Delessa Houdin, uh, a.k.a. Mother Pomony, please tell me what you're rolling to notice things about uh, about Corin when you talk to her. Sure. Uh, I think I was just sitting quietly, maybe with Aurelius with me, just watching the people of this siege going about their business, coming in and out, um, bringing in their their victorious uh, water harvesting from the outside. And I'm going to roll just to be ob- observant. Um, uh, mm. uh, I'm kind of wa- understand and truth. Let's just be straight that's, up. That's and I great. only have 10. Okay. Oh wow! You're yeah okay. Well, you love her. A love blinds everybody. So, sure do. Um, you go ahead and roll that, and that'll be the number of successes you have to get, Corin, in order to um, fool okay. everybody into thinking nothing happened. I feel like this is the first time where you know how in the beginning of the second half where we changed our statements and yeah. how we, we decided how we've all changed as players. I think this is where it came into play. <laughs> I think so too. Mm-hmm. Um, things are really changing for House Houdin, Nay Tyloris. And how did you do, uh, Mother Pomony? How many successes did you get? As I sit and look around, take in everything I see, I rolled a pair of nines, which is just under the 10 I needed. Oh, yeah. Two, Two successes. successes. So now, Corin, what are you going to roll to see, to, to hide from your, from your lover, from your loved one? Uh, the fact that you have just had a uh, cataclysmic vision in that cave. Uh, I will use my power. I will have what is owed to me uh, because Corrin is feeling the first taste of like power hunger and um, as far uh, at least selfishly um, and I guess discipline for survival. Discipline. Uh, I don't. Or I'm not going to no. allow. I'm not going to allow survival focus, but I will uh, not, allow not discipline. the focus, but discipline. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Can I give you a threat to get an extra? Oh, what? I have so many threat. Boy, what? am I going to be <laughs> dumping threat? Well, I need to win this <laughs> roll. No, it's a good roll. <laughs> it's a contested yes, roll. Is... You don't get to roll threat. Don't oh, I get to roll threat? You're right. You're right. No. 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 You're right. I can't yeah. give you. Uh, I can't give you threat, threat for, for PvP. PvP. Is, yeah, I yeah. can't. <laughs> uh, let's see. I rolled a two, a four, and a twelve. What did I need under? I needed. Uh, well, wait. You can't. You can't. You gotta reroll because you can't roll three die. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. That's three, my. Okay. That's my fault, uh, Nora. I, th- these guys are right. You can't yeah, roll. Yeah, here was your PvP. So I rolled a six and a two. <laughs> you still did it. Um, Corin be- <clears throat> maintains rigorous composure. And you don't see how dilated her eyes are until she gets them under control. Uh, And she does not reveal that she's had this cataclysmic vision, this incredible spice experience. Uh, And so, uh, Corin, you can reveal what information you'd like right now. My sweet. It's so good to see you again. I feel it. I feel one day I will be returned to the power I once had. My lady, there's something you need to know before you have that, uh, meeting. Yes, of course. I saw, I saw exactly what we saw in that back room. It was, it was exactly the same. They don't believe that, that Paul is Maudib. They can't. It is absolutely, they absolutely believe that it is in the form of a worm man, man, worm we're man, man. We're, we're man, creature. Man. It's 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 a it's some hybrid form of a of a man worm. Of course, so, thank you. I think that would help. That would aid in in convincing them that we are aligned. Did you see pictographs or images? What it was where? the very same? It was the very same that we saw. Yes, a small room with a one water yes. pocket. We told you of this, Aurelius, yes? No, yes, yes. 
I, I, I'm just going to ask this for my own clarification as GM. Forgive me for interrupting. Do you tell Do you tell um, the Duchess and Aurelius that there was a worm back there? Not yet. Wow. Okay. That's what I'm digging for. And she's not saying <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. Um, um, I, you know, point of clarification. Did we see Pharos being carted off or did only oh. Corrin see? Um, I think oh, that's... everybody saw that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> yeah. You said you were listening to what was going on in the siege just now, um, Duchess. So, yes, you you know that that has happened. Corrin, we must say Pharos, but perhaps the best course of action would be to talk to this Naib before going in Chris knife blazing, as it were? Yes, I think diplomacy is the best way. Just the very least I owe to him. He sang a song that was so horribly offensive. Many in the siege vomited, giving up <laughs> water. Unbelievable. You know, mm, you know, a lot of the Fremen words, if you say them just a little, the pronunciation is so, so delicate and precise that it can take on another meaning. He might have insulted somebody's mother. What were you saying? And that is when Dob and his party walk up. I stand to greet him eye to eye, standing ridiculously close as I notice many Fremen do. Hello, Outworlder. You have time. You've had time to rest. Unfortunately, I will soon have to ask you to leave this place. Your fellow guest has already greatly offended our community. Understood. His attempts to entertain are sometimes poorly received. It is our sincere apology. If I could have a private audience with you before we take our leave. Yes. Uh, you brought prophecy. It came from your lips. I will hear more if you have any more to tell. And he walks off with you. Do you want Aurelius to come with you, or do you yeah, want Yeah, I motion, to... uh, if my advisor may join. Oh, thank certainly. you, lady. Yes. And he brings two Fremen guards with him. But they stand at a distance. Uh, are we in, like, his private quarters behind a hanging, oh, a wall interesting. hanging? interesting. Yeah, you know what? He'll take you all the way back to his yali, which is, like, kind of his private uh, quarters... <laughs> in the living quarters section of the uh, the place. So yeah, you're back there. Uh, y your quarters are very um, accommodating. <laughs> yes, uh, I have much wealth. I am the naive after all. <laughs> yes. Uh, perhaps instead of calling me Outlander, you may call me what I am, Sayadina. Pomini. Sayadina Pomini, if this is what you wish to be called. What more business do we have? You come, you crash a starship, you you anger Shaiholud. You come in, you anger my people. I have been kind. If you have more prophecy for me, I will hear it. If not, you must leave. I think you can tell from my eyes I have not experienced the spice in such quantities as, as many of the people of this world, but I have had a prescient vision. One of myself being of great use to... Forgive me if it sounds foolish, but... Not a worm and not a man, something of both worlds. You mean, the man that is a worm? A worm that is a man? Yes. You have seen yourself being of service. How? I have seen myself riding atop this worm, and in doing so, have sparked a great fear in the pretender. This Muad'Dib, they call him. Yeah, that is what the Fremen call him, yes. Yes, uh, the Messiah. Uh, but Muad'Dib means desert mouse. <laughs> that is, is exactly what he is, and that is what we wish to expose him as. In my vision, the man worm, worm man and I, along with my companions, ride him to Ar Arakeen, and there... There, all of 
The Fremen, all of, of the Outworlders, they all see that that is the true Messiah. He walks this up is my to vision. you. He walks up to you. He puts his hand onto your shoulder and he pushes you as hard as he can. I want to use my Prana Bindu conditioning to not move. Ah, I'll <laughs> allow it. No need for a roll. Hmm. You think that you could ride a worm. But I do not understand this prophecy. How does you riding a worm, <laughs> an impossibility, frankly, how does this, how does this bring the true Messiah to Arrakis? That is the nature of prophecy. It cannot be understood, but once the pieces fit together, the truth reveals itself. This is true. I do know a bit of the culture, and I think I'm pulling from um, bits of other memory, and I tell him that I know the most difficult part of riding a worm is for the first to lay hooks on it. And once that is done, the worm can no longer rotate, and others may climb atop more easily. You wish for me to teach you how to how to ride a worm, and you insist that this is part of a prophecy. I did not say those words, but perhaps the prophecy resides in you too, that you knew them. It is for you to show me? Is this... Hmm. In order to ride a worm, you must be a Fremen. Will you become a Fremen? <laughs> I never thought so great an honor would be offered me. But of course we would all be honored to count ourselves among the Fremen. And I turn to Aurelius and like, try and get him to acknowledge, you know, yes. uh, affirmative. Oh uh, yes, yes, of course. It would be uh, an honor uh, unparalleled in all the known worlds to be afforded a place in your siege. Well, I don't know about an honor in all of the worlds, but it is, <laughs> it is survival. It, it means your survival. I don't know what you're going to do out there in the desert with a broken spacecraft. So if you will live among us, I would hear more of your prophecy. Can you instruct your friend, your companion to live by our laws? and not to make a mockery of us? Oh yes, it was his attempt to honor them and, and that was misguided. But perhaps if he were more learned, uh, such a thing would never occur. And I myself do know something of your ways and I have perhaps failed in my instruction. I will endeavor to try harder so that he does not make a similar error in the future. He will be released and you can stay with us. And I will try to teach you our ways. But my instruction is not easy, and it is not without danger. If you fall in the desert, then you fall, and you will be forgotten. Your water will be kept. Do you understand? Understood. You don't, but nonetheless, I shall give my instruction. And so now, Pharos is released. Woo! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's like super obsequious. Just like you must so prove yourselves. Terribly sorry. <laughs> yes. Sure. Sure. You must prove yourselves to the Fremen, uh, and they're going to see if you know before they teach you the secrets of riding a worm. You must go out into the desert and survive with them. Go out on patrol with them. Live as they do. Work in the siege manufacturer. This could take weeks. This could take months. H have you really agreed to this? I don't see what choice we have. We have to become Fremen or we will die here. Yeah. So we're gonna um, now uh, kind of do a, a series of roles that kind of cover <gasps> this period. Amazing. Um, but you don't <laughs> have Montage. You don't have to be part of the I'm learning to be a Fremen, uh, except that Delessa definitely has to. Mother Pomony definitely has to because that's sort of the, the deal that she made. But the rest of you could choose something else that you do that takes perhaps weeks and months to complete. I, um, yes. I have a pitch. 
And let me hear your pitch. My obsequiousness goes all the way. It's like, I am not worthy of staying with you, not worthy of being in your employ. If you will cast me out from your siege, I completely understand. You'll do me the honor of not claiming my water, then I will, I will walk into the desert. As I look to you and I'm just like, try and just like, someone's got to repair this ship. Very good. Um, so that can thanks. be my project for the for those uh, weeks. Uh, mm. okay. And part of our collective project could be sneaking you water and food to survive. And perhaps one of those assets that we described that those survival assets that we described Cor- Corin had was like f- a frema kit and some provisions. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. We could have easily stowed some of that stuff before we left. Anyway. For sure. I think that you. I think that you have. I think it would be. It would be silly to assume that you did not. So, uh, and I said that I would get a, give a benefit for that excellent role you did to provision yourself. So there is a frem kit out there, um, and so um, let us begin uh, this this process. I don't want to know what your role result is, but I. So don't roll yet. But could you please tell me over these months uh, what you're doing? What 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 dice pool you're putting together, Pharos, to repair the ship? I'm going to go understand and um, and power. Great. And now this scene is going to involve everybody and it's going to take place over these these weeks. So you're going to uh, you're going to use understand and power to put the ship back together. Uh, Meanwhile, what is Aurelius going to do? Can I make a mechanical request? Because we have two momentum, right? Um, Yes. If we roll at the same time, then someone getting momentum means someone else can't use that. So can we like that cascade? That is a very that's a that's a very good point. So we will cascade. I won't I won't make you roll all uh, simultaneously. And thank you for pointing that out. Um, Aurelius, what are you going to do with this time? Are you going to be part of Operation Convince Him I'm a Convince Them I'm a Fremen? Yeah, I think because with his uh, cultural understanding focus with the, with the cultural studies focus for understand i think he is in a unique place to be able to take in these lessons and he probably knows a lot about like kind of the the ritual and the process of it anyway and i think he wants to stick around to make sure to remember like exactly like what what instructions were given what's expected of us and be able to share it or remind the other two so I think that's that's kind of what what he's going to be uh, mainly doing. Very good. I, that sounds like a discipline test to me. Um, so I'll put together a dice pool with discipline. Um, and uh, Corin, what are you going to do during this time? You could do something else. You you you're already a fremen. You don't really need to prove your. I mean, you kind of need to prove yourself to this siege, but you could choose some other activity if you wish. Uh, I think what I would like to do is uh, engage in some sort of uh, sword training with whoever their head uh, fighter is. Oh, that's Dob. Yeah, so I think me and Dob would just kind of bond over some practice Chris knife. Uh, well, you wouldn't use the sacred Chris knife. Not Chris knife. We have knife. to be canonical, but yes. you, would use, <laughs> you would use knives. Um, yes, we would use uh, some knives and just kind of go head to head. I want to, I'm doing this, A, to uh, prove to the fact that I'm still at heart, always have been a Fremen. Um, and second, I want to, I have this, uh, to fight somebody is to know them. So I kind of, even though we're not, um, you know, going for blood, what what knowledge I can gain from from fighting him? Um, that's an amazing that's an amazing thing to roll. And 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 as I said, uh, uh, Mother Pomony, you're going to have to prove that you can you can live with them, you can live as they do, you can survive in the desert. So. Uh, what the dice pool are you going to put together for that? Where, how are oh, you going gosh. to prove that? Well, I had been pre- preparing kind of a different plan to... Uh, uh, well, what I was thinking was I yeah. want to um, use my communicate inspiration 
and my uh, truth, the purpose of argument is to change the nature of truth to, as I'm hanging out with them, casually mm-hmm. get them all to see my way of thinking. Um, but you, you, this should be like a physical like no, test. I'll allow it. You're, test? Going to, okay. you're gonna try to manipulate instead of, instead of really, you know, sincerely trying to become a Fremen, you're going to try to manipulate them. So um, I'm a commander. It's what I do. It's what you do. Let's start with how, I mean, what a great way to get trust by, you know, sparring with, uh, with the Naib, with Dob. Um, And so I would like a uh, battle roll and let's see if he respects you. He's going to roll his battle first. This is just straight only battle. Well, it's battle plus a drive. It's always plus a drive. Yeah, and two die, of course. May I suggest you use one of our momentum? Because if you roll over, then you could pass that on to the next person. It make even more momentum. Okay, so I will do that. I'm going to use power, and I'm going to use battle with uh, focus and long blades. Very good. This is uh, many sparring matches over the course of months, and um, you uh, need to get two successes in order to impress him. Okay, and so I'm going to, what, are we spending momentum for this? Do you want to spend a momentum and get that extra die? Yes. Okay, done. I rolled a seven, a four, and a 19. Uh, Okay, so uh, the seven and the four are, are, are any of those below a focus or anything? No, they're they're not, right? Uh, they are below a focus. What's your so battle focus? They're both focus? below. They're uh they're eight each. What's your battle? But you have a focus in battle. Yes, long blades. Oh, and that's you were. Four. That's, so that's four. That's four successes. successes. Yeah. Um. Okay, so you earned two more successes than you needed. You are currently, by my count, at three momentum. Um, and, um, uh, Dob really likes you, Corin. Dob is, uh, th- considers you a true Fremen. He wasn't sure at first. He thought you were some citified Fremen, but now he knows you to be a true fighter, a true daughter of the desert, and he trusts you. Okay. We definitely have our own handshake now. <laughs> like, we're, we're good. Aurelius, let's see how much you master Fremen protocol to prove that you are one of them. Um, okay. and, uh, what are you going to, uh, what are you going to roll again? Uh, tell okay. me. Better. Well, you said discipline, so I'll do discipline and I will do, oh, I'll do faith again because with, uh, kind of this, the faith in my new orders kind of being, a, being able to choose the right path. Like so listen a, to this. Stuff. I think that faith your faith is in the Bene Gesserit right yeah and you're having to profess faith in this god of theirs and in their Uh-oh. way of right. life so I think that your drive statement you have a drive statement for that right I do what is it again uh, the Bene Gesserit path will guide my steps nope not here you have to cross that out okay but uh-huh. if you do that uh, well you don't have to cross <laughs> it out you have to challenge it right yeah, uh, which means you don't have to cross it out. It means you either gain a complication if you don't cross it out. You yeah. gain a complication right now, or you can go without the complication and you cross it out and you can't use that drive for a while, but you get a point of determination. Okay, I think yeah, I don't think he's tr- truly buying into the Fremen way. I think he might eventually, but it's not right. He is kind of a follower, I think, but I, I don't think that's happening right now. So I won't use it for a while. Uh, and then that will give me a point of determination. That's right. right. Yeah. Okay. I'll take that. And then this you is challenge really the drive. You can't use it until it's recovered. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you. I'm offering you a point of determination, so you now have two determination because I don't think okay. you used no, it I used one before landing. Oh, the ship. so you only have one. You got it. You got the yeah. one that you spent before back. Okay, great. Right. So yeah, so that's yeah. This is still this is still pretty tough. So I'm okay. I'm gonna spend one momentum. Okay. Get an extra die, and I don't have a focus or anything. So yeah, it's gonna go for it. Uh, two successes. Two successes. Two um, that's uh, that's more than enough. They not only uh, trust Corin, they are 
in awe of the Mentats' uh, mastery of their culture. Um, you uh, have become proficient in creating things in the Siege Manufacture. You understand uh, instinctively, not instinctively, intellectually, you're a Mentat. You understand intellectually uh, what to say to them way better now, uh, and they seem to trust you as well. Let's now find out how it goes with repairing the ship. Oh, mm-hmm. now what things are What was the momentum? Getting... Oh, the momentum from that. How many successes did you got? You got, got two. two. successes. I hadn't levied a difficulty, so I'm going to say it was one, and the, that means you earned one momentum. Okay, so I spent one, and I earned one. So. You spent Great. one, and you earned one. Yeah. 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 Even Steven. Even All Steve. right, Pharos. Pharos, the starship mechanic. Uh, mm-hmm. I believe that's your specialty, right? It's how you build your <laughs> character. Well, it's not, but it, I am a... Uh, I think he's telling himself there's not too great a disparity between the mechanisms of the theatrical profession in which I labored for so many years and the mechanics of any kind. Well, I'm going to tell you that this role is actually impossible unless you create some sort of trait or asset. The ship Mm -hmm. has been badly damaged. How are you getting it upright again? And then how are you getting in there and... uh, and fixing what has been broken. Like, you need some sort of a- asset that will allow you to do this. Maybe you can adapt the repulsors from the car yeah, to like, I think that's, lift up the ship. That's a great idea. Lose, lose the, lose the, the, the lose truck. The car. Yeah. And dis- disassemble it, take off the uh, suspensor field generators, and um, use those to attempt to tilt the. Um, the uh, ship back upright out of the sand dune. This is going to be two rolls. Then I first need you to roll to create that asset, that suspensor field that you're going, that you're repurposing. So please mm-hmm. give me, and it's two successes required to create an asset. Do we okay. spin to momentum to get to try? Y- you could, if you wish, yeah. Or is it an either or? Um. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I understand the question. He you has to create an tro- asset Troy first. Troy rules are. I don't know what the book rules are. Troy rules are. It's spin two momentum to make an asset. Oh, is that how he's been doing it? Well, guess what? You're the boss now. <laughs> this is I'm your boss show. now. I'm boss now. Um, let me let me look here. I mean, uh, I have notes here. Uh, create an asset. Um, it says make a skill test difficulty two. That's what it says. Uh, uh, and so. I'm not Troy saying Lord. Troy's wrong, oh. but he and I run the game very differently. So I think I need two skill rolls here. Um, okay. The first one is difficulty two to create to to repurpose this suspensor field. Okay, great. Do I have momentum to spend on this asset creation? You have three. Okay, and I'll be rolling. Okay. Do you want to spend any of those? They're in the pool. Yeah. Um, oh, we spattered. Sp- I'll spend one. Yeah. Okay, great. I'll spend roll, one with roll three dice. Here we go. Two now. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. I think this counts on my focus of deductive reasoning to to mechanically reason this this uh Yeah, you definitely did the, some deductive reasoning here. Go yeah. ahead. All right. I rolled under it. That's two successes. Nice. Two successes is what uh, was needed, and so you have created a new asset suspensor field. But then I also rolled a uh, a one, so that's two more. And I rolled oh. under, and I rolled a ten, which is another success. So that's a total of five successes. Okay, so wow. you've added three to your momentum Whee! pool. So you guys have a total momentum of five right now. Would you like to uh, spend some of those to just kind of, I don't know, give yourself some benefits here, like create other traits, things like that? Yeah, I mean, I would love to create the trait of repaired. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll let you do that for two momentum. Sold. Okay, <laughs> um, you repurpose this. Uh, uh, you you got the you got the two successes you needed to create the temporary asset, uh, and now you've paid momentum to use it, and mm-hmm. you have repaired the starship suspensor field. You think that this thing might take off again. It is still on its side, so you will be taking off on its side, but you think that you might be able to make okay. this work. All right, finally, and, and I'm just like in solitude. Like, sleeping during the day, waking up at night, looking at the moons <gasps> in the Aww. distance, maybe seeing just a white shape on, on the field, just kind of like, and like, just imagining, like, just like, 
just being nourished both by the sucking on the fluid in the still suit and like little rations and like just imagining the the look of pride on on uh on the Reverend Mother Pomini's face when she sees how well I've done. So proud of you, son. <laughs> so finally, speaking of the Reverend Mother Pomini, you have three momentum in your pool. Uh, and you are um, you're kind of putting on an act for them. You're manipulating them. Um, uh, your difficulty to do that, I think, is going to be two. Um, but if you succeed, they will trust you as much as they trust Aurelius and Corin right now. And they may teach you the secrets to riding a maker. Oh, so much rides on this. I, I wake with them. I go to sleep with them. I, I give them prayers of the Sayadina. Maybe if they have one, try and learn from her. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm rolling for truth to change the nature of their truth. And inspiration is my communicate focus. And I would like to spend all the momentum. Wow. I'm okay. going to be a hog yeah. for that momentum, and I'm going to get two extra dice. Yeah, you get two dice. Okay. Dude, do it. Go for it. So, um, let's see. Truth is six. Communicate is eight. I need 14s and below. Anything below an eight is two. <gasps> a two, a three, a nine, and an 18. So that's one, two, three, four. Five successes. And you can you re-roll that 18, too, if you want. <gasps> Thank you. <laughs> I will. Yeah. It's another 18. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did my you've, job. Earned, you've earned three momentum, and you've succeeded beyond your wildest dreams. These, uh, these Fremen really believe that you are a font of prophecy. And so... I, I'm going I would to like to dress what they think a Sayadina is, like their version of a reverend mother of a... a, a holy person dresses like. Yes, um, you have gone full native now, and in garb and dress, uh, Mother Pomini looks uh, very much like one of the Fremen herself now. Um, is there even maybe a little bit more blue in her eyes? Hmm. Um, the other Fremen certainly seem to see it. And so now, since you have fully um, huckstered uh, these Fremen, uh, yourself, Mother Pomini, and since your companions have gained their full trust as well, I'm going to end tonight's episode with a, a, a scene, by opening a scene. Now, we may go back and fill in some of the preparations you made before this scene happens, but at the end of tonight's episode, I want you to imagine Mother Pomini out in the middle of the desert, standing tall behind her, Aurelius and Corin. Uh, and uh, somewhere far off, uh, maybe on the horizon, uh, there's a glint of metal. There is a starship on its side out there. But in this place, the Fremen are standing with you and moving towards you through the sand, throwing up sand, an enormous geyser, is a sandworm. Uh, and again, everything is vibrating. Uh, there is a s smell of spice in the air. And that is when Dob hands you two maker hooks, <laughs> looks you in the eye and says, are you ready? All my life has prepared me for this moment to prove that I am truly Fremen. So tune in next week to watch <laughs> Becca Scott, a.k.a. Mother Comedy, <laughs> ride a sandworm. <laughs> worm rider! Get that t-shirt! Yeah. Um, they've <laughs> spent months with the siege, and now it's time to ride a sandworm and ride this baby home! Um, thank you to my magnificent players, Skid Mauer, Becca Scott, Ross Bryan, Nora Abraham. Thank you guys so much. That was a lot of fun tonight. It was awesome. Thank you, Jared. So fun. Thanks, Thanks Jared. Jared. Thank you, Jared. Uh, we'll be back next week. Love you, Nash. Bye-bye. <laughs>